Hey, is that my sandwich? Sidney, I told you not to eat Mr. Payart's sandwich. It's just Peart. You sure that it's not Peart? I think he would know. Are you sure? Because we're pretty big fans. Chill, man. Chill, man. Nine billion names of pod. From Atlanta, blue cities in a sea of red are tight. It's the Nine Billion Names of Pod with Dan Bauman and Michael Reed. I'm Dan Bauman. I'm going to need you to climb right down off my back. <laughs> so let's talk about some stuff. Fine, 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 fine. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Um, let's just rip the band-aid off. Um, not a good thing happened. Um, when was it? January 7th. Uh, we lost one third of the the second triumvirate in my life uh neil peart from rush the drummer passed away um he they had retired three and a half years ago 2015 was the last tour and they uh he he said there's a great documentary called time stand still Mm -hmm. which is chronicling that last tour that and it's interesting through the whole thing he's like yeah i'm gonna retire after this and there and the other two guys are like well we we don't know we he said and it's heartbreaking but at the time he said is oh i'm i have you know bad arthritis and i can't play up to the um to the caliber of playing that i've always done for three hours right. a night for and from, and from what i understand he made it through the tour but he was in a great deal of pain yeah absolutely i mean absolutely you know the fact that he didn't end up completely destroyed and addicted to probably painkillers is right a, is a testament to his you know fortitude as a human being right and but it turns out that he was diagnosed with uh with brain cancer uh, glioblastoma, I believe, yeah. is what it was. Not um, fun. And they, that's how that band has always been. They, that no one knew that. I mean, industry people knew, like uh, the band knew, you know, the families knew, but it wasn't a thing that the fans knew. Right. And they were very, very private about it. And it kind of came out of nowhere, you know. Well, yeah, because I mean, I can understand that if suddenly it's announced, you know. Celebrity X, you know, will pass away within a year because of disease Y. It changes their reality in their last year. Right. And some of them may want that, may want the outpouring of love. You know, I had forgotten about this guy, but I remember that's like good. Warren Zevon did that. Yeah. When he got, when he got his diagnosis. So did uh, Glenn Campbell. He went on yeah. did a last album tour. He mm-hmm. said, I've got the dementia. I got the Alzheimer's and I'm going to be fading away soon. So I'm going to. You know, go out on a farewell tour. Yeah. Now, as it turns out, Rush did do that, but just didn't tell anybody that right. it was the last one. They kind of hinted around like, this could be, I mean, we're not saying we're never going to play live again, but this is the last tour. Right. They kind of, you know, they took the, you know, they ripped the Band-Aid off in like thirds, a little bit like, no tours, but maybe, mm-hmm. and, you know. And he figured, well, unlike bands that uh, might say that if they're from England, when you're from Canada... Someone like Dan is like, yeah, a one-off Rush show in Toronto. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you'd go. Yeah, for sure. I was hoping, you know, when they retired, I, w- my, I was hoping that what we would get as least would be some studio albums. No tours, just we're going to make some more records and that and I, be I, enough. I had heard that that was a possibility. Right, but now knowing the diagnosis. Exactly, and considering that, you know, Neil was their was their lyricist. I yes. Mean, you know, yeah, absolutely. If he's not up to writing songs, it's like, we can do some stuff, but it's kind of not going to be Rush if right. Neil's not at least a mix. And like I said, this has always been their MO. I mean, they, they've they never, they were, you know, you never learned much about their personal lives at all through the run of the band. I mean, you knew yeah. who they were. I mean, they they were all married and they had kids, and but it wasn't a thing where... Kind of like Pink Floyd in the sense that the music... And the visuals spoke. You may know the, the people's names, but, but that's about it. Until the internet came along, you know, or MTV, I guess. Yeah. Um, you could have walked by, you know, any member of Pink Floyd or Rush and just not noticed. Exactly. I mean, you probably would have, but because you would have picked public. up magazines and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, of course. I knew what they looked like. Right. They the didn't. Records. They didn't say no. Never take our photograph. But right. they're not like 
they're not putting it out there like look at us but it's like i don't you know i barely know i've seen like one picture of getty's wife from you know 1980 yeah, that's it, you know, and they have kids and never seen pictures. And, you know, not that we need to, but it's, you know, nope. a lot of celebrities, that's kind of the thing. It's, you know, well, you know everything about them, and especially nowadays. But they were never like that. So it doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't surprise me that they kept it within, you know, the, the tribe. They kept it right. And, quiet. And, and let's face it, they don't owe a damn thing to the fans beyond what they're willing to give. Yeah. You know? And it's like Harlan would say, you know, people would come to book signings feeling entitled. You bought the book. That's all you get. Yeah. If I deign to sign it, that's on me to decide whether to do it or not. But I don't know you a fucking thing. Yeah. Now, of course, you know, not everyone's quite as acerbic about it. But it's just like, I don't owe a current picture of my wife and kids to you. Right. And I'm not going to provide it. Right. You, you know, know it's just the fans were you know the huge outpouring of of love and oh, you know yeah. they, they you know all the uh, all the uh, obituaries and like the write ups in all the magazines uh, the best <laughs> the best uh, description I read of Neil was they said this is your favorite drummer's favorite drummer yeah that's true <laughs> kind if, of. if he's not your favorite drummer your favorite drummer has a favorite drummer and, and this guy him, is it. you know mike portnoy from uh dream theater and winery dogs and all that he um he he was one of the people who knew he wrote a really nice long piece about how you know he it took him a minute to get into the inner circle but you know because he was a huge fan obviously but once he got on a level of you know once he got through the wall and Neil realized he was okay. They became really good friends, and he. Yeah, that's a that can be a double edged sword. As as somebody who has started as a fan for a number of bands and mm-hmm. then ended up working for them, once you get on the inner workings, when you see how the sausage is made, you, you lose that. You're yeah. like, wow, you're a wonderful writer who does the most brilliant lyrics. And you kind of suck as a human being. Yeah, and you're just a person too. Wow. That's the thing. Exactly, and that's and that's the other thing. It's like you idolize them for the art, their artistic output, but man, you know they got to take three shits a day and you know yeah. scratch their ass and you know burp. They're in bad moods sometimes, and, and you know they're they're human. They do the human things. Yeah. So, uh, a farewell to a king. Yeah, indeed. And well said. Um, and. As much as I would be interested to hear, kind of like when um, uh, when Adam Yauk died, yeah, I wouldn't mind hearing some music from the other two. Just don't call it Beastie Boys. Oh, the you? same. Oh, yeah. In other words, I would be thrilled to hear something from Alex and Getty. Don't you dare call it Rush. No, no, and they wouldn't. I mean, in and you know, at this point, what do they have left to prove? Oh, nothing. nothing if, of if anything, it's because they got some ideas and they were feeling it, and they just wanted to. You well, know. in in uh, when was it? Ninety nine, ninety seven. When uh, that's another part of the tragedy was that when he retired. Well, well, he, when his he his daughter was killed right. in a, in a car accident, and then his wife. I, I read one of his books where he was yeah. describing. His I wife, thought I thought it was they both died in the accident. No. It's her in the accident, and then the wife died within a year. Right, the wife got sick, and he through his words he was like she gave up on life is what it was she got sick and didn't care and just wanted to go away and she did and then he just packed up he locked up his house and he got on his motorcycle and he he rode to alaska and then turned around and rode to south america and then just kept riding for like four years or something crazy like that and the other guys were like well i guess we're done um, you know, and they said in many interviews, they were like, well, there's no, there isn't rush with another guy. It's just not a possibility. That's not how this works. So we were done. We were hanging it up. And then, you know, he came back and he settled and he, he started talking and we got together and we got in a room and, you know, here we are. And they went, they did a, a bunch more records, you know. Um, what do we got? Three more out of them. We got Snakes and Arrows. We got Vapor Trails. Which Vapor is Trails. The one, that was the return. That was the return album, and that is a brilliant and hard album. That song Vapor Trails is you know about tragedy, and uh, we got Ghost Rider because that's what he did, and um, yeah, and we got Clockwork Angels out of it. So we got a, you know, and a bunch of live albums too. So oh yeah, yeah. For every studio album, there was a pretty much at that point, a, you know, a and a video. Yeah. Uh, 
So, and that's the sad part, you know, his, his daughter and his wife died leaving him alone. And now he died leaving a wife and a daughter. Yep. So, you know, yep. So people out there say Padme wouldn't have died from a broken heart. <laughs> that shit can happen, man. Yeah. I mean, that can happen. I mean, you know? it's not like, you know, you suddenly have a broken heart and your body gives out necessarily. I'm sure there was an, but another. you can give up the will to live. Oh, yeah. And stop oh, yeah. taking care of yourself and just drift away. Exactly. So, farewell to the king. Yeah. And, um, you know, we got, what do we got? 14 albums? Um, 17 more, albums? 17 studio, I want to yeah. say. And, you know, a, and a shit ton of live albums. and a shit, You know, there's plenty of, you know, there is a legacy, a huge oh. legacy. Oh, yeah. um, you know, and I, I'm i fortunate. I have saw saw them plenty. Of, I, I, <laughs> it was funny. A, a, a large number of my friends, like, checked in on me. Yeah. Like, are you okay? It's like, well... Yes, I'm very sad, but Suhaila I Suhaila actually texted me and said, <laughs> "I want to send something to Dan, but I but but I'm worried that he would think that I was making fun of him." I no. said, "About what? Like you haven't heard?" No. Oh my god, oh, what's wrong with you? You hadn't heard. I hadn't heard because I had literally had just turned on my phone. Uh, I hadn't been on the internet all day. Yeah. And she told me and I was like, "That's probably a rumor." Go and I, check I it online, checked, yeah. and it's like, all right, these are three reputable sources in a row. I'm going to go ahead and say it's good, and then of course, and then I did the thing everyone else did. I checked in on you, yeah, and I, you know, I am grateful that everyone thought of me. I didn't know the guy. I mean, I was right. just a huge fan. Actually, he's the only member of Rush you never met. Exactly, yeah, I met, and the for other good two. reason because when he came back, he said, "Listen, yeah, I'm, I'm back, a... but I'm not going to glad hand." Well, he was a very shy guy, and he didn't, you know, he didn't do that, and. Yeah. That was fine. You know, yeah. I, I met, I get to meet Getty twice. And that's the and big Alex. thing. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, when, he, when he dies, that's going to be a bad day for me. <laughs> and, and that's the thing we're getting, you know, we're getting, we're in the age, let's face yeah. it, where the artists that we grew up with and love to one degree or another are passing away yeah. in the case of, uh, you know, in case of Neil before their time, much before. I mean, their I've time. said this on the podcast before. If you die before 80, I feel worse about it than you die after 80. I know you got to draw the line somewhere. After 80, I feel like you've had a full life. And beyond that is golden. Live to 100 by all means. I'll still feel sad, but I won't feel like you were taken before your time. Exactly. And uh, he got taken before his time. Yeah, much like, you know, Prince and and David Uh, Bowie and and George Michael. George Michael. Let's put put it this way. The 80s have had a real rough go of it. Tom Petty. Yeah. In the last, you know. In the last five years. Last five years, we lost some giants that either, uh, you know, came up or increase their popularity in the 80s yeah you know tom petty stretches what 40 years oh yeah but i'd say the late 70s to the mid 80s were his oh yeah the mtv golden, you know you know the era um yeah we're you know and this is a rather this is somewhat of a new phenomenon for humans in the sense that you know go back a hundred years news of your favorite artists, first of all, we're getting into the beginnings of recorded, widely distributed recorded music. Right. So, you know, artist X passing away, you may not even know who's the singer of the song that you like. Right. If you do, you have no way of knowing unless it makes it into the newspaper. Yeah. And you might not see that and you might not hear it for a month or forever. You may, you may die thinking that they're still alive for some reason. So this is kind of a new, you know, a new thing. And, uh, it's made even, you know, worse for one to one degree or another through the internet and through well because it's instantaneous i mean exactly well and that's the other thing you know when somebody you know very popular or noteworthy dies i mean if you're plugged in it's pretty much within a minute or two yeah if you're you know if you're watching that's exactly what happened i did exactly the same thing i saw like the thing and i was like I hope this is a hoax. And then I jumped around. Like I went on Twitter. That was the first place I went and, and I found a couple of legitimate links and I was like, Holy shit. And yeah. again, to, to go back to their, their MO, he, uh, he had died on Tuesday 
and they announced it on that Friday. Right. Friday afternoon. Exactly. So it wasn't like, it wasn't instantaneous. It right. was kept under wraps. And I appreciate that because that allows the family to kind of get over the initial shock, the friends and yeah. stuff like that, to kind of settle, go, okay, when we announce this, X, Y, and Z are going to happen. Let's get ready for that. Are we ready? Yeah. Now we announce. Yes. As opposed to, you know, having everything come at you at once. You know, the grieving, the dealing with what's happened, the cause of the death. Like if it was an accident or something like yeah. that. If it's all coming at you at the same time, it's brutal for friends and you oh, know, yeah. close friends and family. You know, and they had to put out a, an official statement, which was very nice. But, I mean, it was... Uh, you know, it wasn't until a day or two ago that, uh, you know, I saw anything from the guys themselves, like Getty's uh, Instagram. He po posted the last picture they all took together and a couple of like old pictures and stuff and yeah. like wrote a note finally saying, you know, hey, thanks for all the outpouring of. You right. Know. See, even even the what, four or five, four days that they waited was still not enough to do. You know, he had to process through oh, and be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. all right. One let's of his put, oldest friends is gone. Right, exactly. And, let's pull out that. Let's pull out that last photo and a couple old ones. I'm, I can do that now. Mm -hmm. You know. And so. it was a great, like, just selfie of the three of them that yeah. Daddy had taken on his phone. You yeah. know, it was a nice. thing. And I tell you, you know, thanks to you, I've seen them twice, mm -hmm. and the second time was their last tour. Mm -hmm. Was the last local availability to see. You know, I think that was your last time too, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't remember you traveling anywhere to go. Not for that one, no. I, I you, you did go up for that meet and greet. I went up was, for the meet and greet right. in New York, so I saw them. Uh, yeah, I, on Snakes and Arrows, I went up and saw them in New York because my friend got the meet and greet, and that's how I got to meet them. Um, but no, I only seen them here the last couple of times. But I, you know, I've seen every tour since 1987, since Hold Your Fire. So, but you know, and that's that was my thing. <laughs> so. <sighs> well, on to yeah, on to happier stuff. Well, somewhat happier. I want. I got a few things I want to talk about right. real quick. Um, Watchmen. Yeah, you have finished it, right? I have. Yes, because we we did it at episode around episode three or four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we didn't come back to it. Um, there's some news. Okay, spoilers, by the way, if you haven't seen it yet. but Yeah, we're, we're not going to do a complete rundown. We're no, just no, gonna, no, no, no. We're but, just going to talk about it. But the it. reason I'm talk I want to talk about it now is because Damon Lindelof has passed yeah. on a second season. However, mm -hmm. it has been put out there that it could be a Fargo situation. An anthology kind of deal? Correct. Mm -hmm. In that when we have a good idea... We'll do a season of Fargo. And if there's three or four years in between, so be it. That's the way it goes. So there's hope. You know, HBO was given the blessing, not that they really needed it because, you know, David Lindelof doesn't own the rights. Oh, yeah. Um, to go ahead and continue Watchmen. I just, I I gave everything I could to that, to that first season. Yeah. I got nothing else to give. And HBO went... Nah, I think we did something really good and don't want to fuck with it. You know, yeah. the door's always open to Damon if he wants to come back. We're we're happy to do that. And I'm like, okay, I could, you know, I'm I'm of I'm kind of conflicted on the whole thing. Yeah, was, part of you goes, it was perfect. Yeah, I mean, it was me, it was really well done. I mean, it was really no 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 no. It was phenomenally well yes, done. It was the fact that I was casting a jaundiced eye at it and when i started it i feel <laughs> well, you i feel ashamed no we well we've been burned right plenty of times but by but, that but guy. a friend of mine pointed out like yeah but damon also did the leftovers and that was another masterpiece of a tv okay, show I'm that like, i have not all seen. right all right all right we can we can forgive you know we can forgive um you know some of the shortcomings of lost yep. and uh, prometheus yep. And, you know, not everyone can bat a thousand, you know, for every uh, The Shining, there's some, you know, garbage book that came yeah, in, yeah, of course. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, so, but my, going back to what I was saying, you know, yes, it was, it was a phenomenally, oh God, but, so but part bad. of me is like, what was the point? Why do just this little bit and then leave it on a cliffhanger? And why wouldn't, you know, if it's not going to be a continuing thing? Well, here's the thing. The biggest cliffhanger of all, obviously, is 
Is she know? or isn't she? Is she or is she not? You know, is the egg? Doc- exactly. <laughs> Those of you who have watched will have known what we're talking about. Yeah. Those that haven't are going, what? Egg? What? Huh? Yeah. Huh? And the problem with with having not left that as a cliffhanger. No, that was the right call to that, do it that, that way. Right, because you would have had to have done a lot more episodes after that. I mean, yeah. as soon as it's established. Well, let's put it this way. If she is, you got to go further or people will freak the fuck out. Yeah. If you if she's not, then, of course, you can end it there. You know, you could just have her stepping and then just falling into the water and be like, oh, I guess she's not. OK. Yeah. And that's the end of that. But the way they ended it was just so delicious and perfect because yeah. it's it's it can be what we want it to be in our heads. What would Sister Knight do? with that kind of power and it again it goes back to that's why one of the things i think is why it was so well done is because you know what do you do when you have god on your side you know where do you go you know it's game over so yeah. how do you continue we've, yeah, we've got a hulk we've got a god yeah exactly it's like, i mean an actual you know yeah. it's all done it's all over so uh, they did it really well leaving it just hanging. and the thing is is that <sighs> Part of me, this is not the kind of shit that I write, really. So I can't say, well, I would have done, th-, you know. But I just feel there's so much richness there that could be more as possible. Oh, of course. And it's like, all right, what's your idea? I, I, I don't know. The wor- <laughs> Well, the world building that was done in the graphic, you know, was so intense that... But, but the thing is, is that this is a completely new world with about five or six plot points pulled out of it. You know, they yes they, and no. Yeah, they, they they built something new upon the the foundation of Watchmen, the graphic novel. Yes, and yeah, you know, you get a few of the same characters, mm-hmm. and there's a few little callbacks here and there, but for the most part, you get brand new shit. Yeah, you know, I mean, let's let's not talk about Lube Man. <laughs> Everyone was like, "We need Lube Man." <laughs> I'd say Lube Man spinoff, man. That's what we need. We need a Lube Man spinoff. That's all we need. I, 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 I would watch that. Yeah. Um. But if it turns out to be like a like you said, like an anthology kind of thing, and that's fine. And and, and that's the thing. I I I applaud HBO for realizing what they did. And how they could fuck it up by going, all right, you're out, great, let's plug in someone else. Yeah, yeah. And and of course, if somebody else comes in and goes, here's my idea, and it's just as good as the kind of thing that mm-hmm. Damon Lindelof, and I'm sure there are people out there that could be like, oh, I could pick that up, no problem. Well, if you can write a convincing treatment and get it to HBO, maybe they'll green light it. Yeah. But I think they're pretty married to Damon. And who knows, in three to five years, he may be like, oh, yeah, I can, yeah. oh, okay. I see something and maybe his schedule will open up and maybe they'll do that. And we may not get any of the same characters back. Yeah. They may take it. They may take another, you know, another angle on it, Mm -hmm. you know, or maybe they'll bring back, let's face it. If she did become Dr. Manhattan, you gotta have, you gotta have uh, Angela Abar, you know, there being Dr. Manhattan, I would hope, but you know, but anyway, um, it, yeah, folks, if you haven't seen HBO's uh, Watchmen series, holy crap, I would put it at probably one of the three best TV shows of the year and probably in the top 15 ever. And one of the there's one particular episode that is so brilliantly directed. Uh, oh, the, the, the um, nostalgia, episode. nostalgia episode. Holy genius. The way they did it, they tied. I'm like. I felt that. I felt yeah. every little bit of that. I'm like, I get that. Just, and again, just taking a uh, a almost side character from the from the graphic and making him Hood of Justice and yep. making such a huge like leap with it. Yeah, is a, was amazing. Yeah, that's just. When Damon says he put everything into it, he put everything into yeah. it because it's what I think seven episodes. Was it seven no? It was eight? like nine. No. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. It was like because I remember I was I got to eight and was I was like, wait, I, oh tonight will be the was last it nine. One. I, okay. It was like it was an odd number. So uh, yes, it was an odd number. For some reason, I thought it was seven. Okay, it's nine. Yeah. Um, 
there's a lot in those those yeah. episodes. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and it's there's it's all killer, no filler. Yeah, Regina and King was amazing. Tim, Jean's, Tim Blake Nelson, Gene Smart, Jean man. Smart. She needs a supporting uh, a supporting actress yeah. nomination for this man because yeah. she's just her badassery is just. And I remember watching. Like I saw the the previews for it, and all they showed was stuff from the first episode. So right. it was all the the Seventh Cavalry stuff right. and Don Johnson and a little bit of Regina King. And I just kept going, "What the fuck is this? Is it have anything to do ah. with the world? You know? Okay, the Rorschach masks. Okay, I get that. Okay, and they, you know, I but even in that, they that was the See, only tie. And that's what led to my going and going, I'm going to watch it. But but again, oh, they, God, I think yeah. it was the right call. I mean, they, they played Oh, it. yeah. No, well, you can't, because everything is so intricately connected and calls back and pulls from things that if you start showing little bits of subsequent episodes, all of a sudden it, it lessens the impact when you see them in actual running order. Right. The only thing that pissed me off was there was one episode, and I think it was episode seven when he when when uh, let's just say when um, Ozzy Mandius Ozzy Man I was going to say his name but yeah when Adrian Ozzy Mandius Veit? Adrian Veidt when he uh, was in the prison when they finally got him and he right. put him in the thing there was a tag at the end of one of the episodes where he got the they gave him the the thing yeah. and that they hadn't tagged anything in the previous episode I know and, and I watched the recap and I was like wait when did I miss that. <laughs> And when I saw that, because normally when it goes, you know, the what I normally do when I start a series, I watch it credits all the way through and all the way through mm. to see how they structure it and what they do and if they tag stuff. Yeah. And if there's nothing in the first, then I'm like, all right, they don't do that in this. God damn it, they did it. But they only did it the one time. I know. Because <laughs> I went back and I watched so did know, I. every single one. Like, is there more? Is no, there more? Is there more? Uh, uh, so th this is definitely a Blu-ray purchase. Oh, good. Absolutely. I'm definitely going to be getting that. And who knows? You might get a little extra. You yeah, know, there might be more stuff. Might yeah. be a little stuff. But I have a feeling the way it was written, the writing is so tight and concise and brilliant. And it's not I a I can't feature. imagine there's a lot left on the cutting room floor. They don't do that on TV, really. Yeah. Like you, well, on HBO, you can, you know. You can get a little more, but it's, it's possible. so not it. Yeah. I, I would be... I would be very surprised if there's too much extras. And that's fine. I'm buying it on Blu-ray for the episodes. Yeah. You know. So that was a good thing. Yep. On the other end of the spectrum, we've been... Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, we we moved to film. All right. And, uh, Did you see it? No. Oh, oh no. God, no. <laughs> that's a... No, no, no. Part of me goes, you know what? It might be fun to, like go and hate watch it but i'm like i'm not gonna spend 15 dollars to hate watch something no, i'll watch it on hbo when it comes on tv or if it's a you know a cheap rental on netflix or whatever fine i'll check it out but from what i understand it's just it's it so many problems yeah so many problems i even uh, you know anticipated it and posted on facebook you know marked safe today from the cats I... movie <laughs> because the trailer i mean they should have known this was going to happen. When they released that trailer, the outpouring of hatred. Well, they were fucked by that point. They couldn't. There was nothing they could do. I mean, there was no, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog retconning that they could really do. Well, from what I understand, they released it unfinished to, to meet their release date and then sent an updated version like 10 days later. Yeah, something like that. You know, because apparently... Judy Dench's hand was her hand in one instead of a paw, and they yeah. hadn't gotten to that point yet. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, yeah. I mean, at a certain point, you just got to release it and, you know, take I mean, your licks. Make, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take your tongue bath. Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious. I will report back when and if. I probably will at some point. Oh, we'll point. watch it at some point. Yeah. Well, it's a musical, so in your household, it's we'll, mandatory. We'll watch it. You know, we she didn't have any interest in seeing, like, going to see it. So, uh, but I'm I, I just to see the train wreck of it and see <sighs> how nuts it is. And I think there's three songs out of Cats that I may have on my iTunes. I don't know. Uh, memory. That's the only one I know. Great yeah. song. 
way overplayed. Yeah. I always skip it if it comes through on my shuffle. I'm like, nope, not listen to that. But Rum Tum Tugger. Okay, yeah. That's a fun song. They yeah. actually did, in, back in the 80s, they did a music video for it with the original Tum Tum Tugger played by... Um, oh, shit. What's his name? Yeah. I uh, did a show with him. I know. Um, I... It, it, um, Not trademark, but uh, I, Terrence Mann. Terrence Mann. Terrence, Terrence Mann. Mann. Yes, I'm. I'm sitting in the green room, and um, we were talking, and hadn't you know gone up uh, on the first day. At, you know, hey, this person is oh, yeah, and Terrence Mann. I went what? And Terrence, you know, they said Terrence Mann. He's the the man in yellow. Terrence freaking Mann. Oh, <laughs> and, you know, and they looked at me like jaded as they were, like you. Fuck off. <laughs> I don't care if it's, you know, God himself playing a role. We don't get excited about stuff. You know, like, hey, listen, I'm over higher. You yeah. know, I can be excited. Right. And, you know, and of course, when we did the cast photo, I shook his hand and that was it because that's what you do. Yeah. And if we hadn't done a cast photo, I never would have approached him. Right. Because there you just don't do that. Yeah. But you I, can you can fanboy from afar going, that's the original Rum Tum Tucker. Yeah, I only got, you know, I only got to talk Star Wars with Neil deGrasse Tyson cuz he liked my shirt and was like, "Hey, you, uh, you know, right. this thing." And it was on, so it was cool. Exactly. But I wasn't going to run up to him, uh, Dr. Tyson, yeah. you know. So, yeah, so that's a that's a thing. And it was a huge bomb, wasn't it? What the uh Cats? Oh, what the the, the movie yeah, well, yes, that's what we're talking about. Yes. Yeah, huge, massive. I mean, financially, oh, yeah. Probably close to a $100 million yeah. loss. Yeah. You know, that's... Uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber doesn't have a good track record with film adaptations. No. You know, because remember Phantom of the Opera? Oh, yeah, we have that. Yeah, um, that I have seen. The only reason I've seen that multiple times is... Uh, is because Emmy Rosam is in it. Oh yeah, and she is basically a creature of perfect sound, light, and beauty. So <laughs> all right, but uh, now, every everything else about that, you're just like, nah. Eh, and you know. he's written, I've he's written a, a sequel to Phantom. Yes, Love Never Dies Love that never takes dies. place in Coney Island. Yes, I've seen it. We, it was part of the season at the Fox. Oh really? And yes, is it? It makes no sense at all. Okay. okay. There is a there is a pro shot video of it um, that you can see that was on YouTube for a while. Um, it's just weird because he's like running a you know the Phantom is running a sideshow or something, and there was a couple of good numbers, and there was a little person who was in the sideshow, and she was oh, that, that's phenomenal. Andrew... Oh, oh, I was say that was an Andrew Lloyd Webber, wasn't <laughs> right? it? No, uh, yeah. Uh, no, there was this little person actor, and she was she was fantastic. She did okay, yeah. you know. but it's a weird ass, weird ass show. And you know, I'm not a huge fan of fan well, of anyway. And you know what his new one is? No, he has done a musical adaptation of Cinderella. Okay, yep, and that's is that um, the one that's been running for a couple of years, or is he no, doing a brand new one? Oh no, you know, it's it's his. It's a new one. Uh, okay, it just announced its opening date. Oh, I want to say. I don't think it's opening on Broadway. I think it's opening in the West End. That makes sense. You know, go to a go to a home country audience first before yeah. you take it to Broadway because it'll be you know because there was a Cinderella on Broadway a couple of years. Yeah, ago. there has there has been Cinderella. This is his own and creation. The, it won the Tony Award for costumes because the um, at least the one number we saw in the Tonys. I think she. You know, uh, when the fairy godmother shows up, Cinderella, like, she's in rags, and she, like, pulls a pin out of her hair, and it turns into a gown. It was unbelievably crafted. It was nice, fantastic. Yeah, See, I like that stuff. You see it on film, you're like, oh, that's nice. You see it live, you're like, whoa, that's not digital. They did oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. But still, I will, I will uh, always say one of the greatest pieces of stagecraft I ever saw was uh, in Sister Act, the musical. I did that show. I know you did. Tell me which one it is. The uh, the cops disco number where he <laughs> was in his in his cop suit and then they bust it out and he's in you know a disco suit and he does a whole disco number and then at the very end they pull that off and he's back, back to a cop back in a cop suit. Yep. I was like, that was amazing. That's a, that was another one of those shows where I went in going, oh god, do I have to do this show for eight weeks? Yep. kill myself. And then after a couple of days of teching through it, I'm like, yeah, these numbers are kind of catchy. And by the 
second or third performance, I'm like, this is a really fun show. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Because anything that's adapted for a film, my brain immediately goes, what a load of and shit. And they changed it. I mean, oh, they, they changed, changed it, it dramatically. It's yeah. not Motown now. It's disco. It's disco and they did. And... They basically just took the essence of it. Kind of like with Bring It On. Yeah. You know, it's not the movie version. They, they do their own thing, but they kind of borrow to kind of lend the name. Right. And that, I didn't work on that. Saw it three times. I, yeah. Which is impossible for me. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it barely, it takes me so much just to get out to see a show. To see it. But to see it three times, that tells you something. Yeah. Because that was a phenomenal show. Yep. Not just because there were cheerleaders. <laughs> It didn't, didn't hurt, but <laughs> uh, no, not, not in that show. Just it, it wasn't a thing. Yeah, but okay. I mean, but no, the number it was fabulous, mm -hmm. fabulousness. Um, uh, back to television. Okay, guess what's getting rebooted after uh, 30, 35 years? Thirty-five years, uh, roughly. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's a bunch that I know of. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, well, there's at least two. Well, speak of the two you know about. The one uh, I think I know which one you're talking about. The the one the one that's been announced is they're doing a Save by the Bell. Uh, oh, for Peacock, the streaming. Uh, the, uh, I, I've NBC. heard about that. I wouldn't bring it up because I no one cares. Right. And uh, so are, are you talking about Punky Brewster? I am talking about which Punky is, Brewster. Which I believe is also the NBC streaming service. Yes, it's, it's for Peacock. Yeah. And uh, Soleil Moonfry is back yeah. as Punky Brewster. Yeah. And I want to see what a 30, 40-year-old woman looks like when she says, Punky Power. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping that they they do it. Well, I think I may have watched a couple episodes back in the day. Oh, I did when I was a I kid. I remember yeah. some of it. I remember some of it. I remember uh, the um, the adopted father or yep. the whatever was the uh, police captain from from from, yes. from, from, <laughs> from police academy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like that voice sounds familiar. Where have I heard? Oh, it's him. Yeah. So I, I'm just inter apparently Cherie Johnson was her friend on that show. Oh and yeah. She's back too. Okay. And I'm like. Okay, you know what? If this is how it works now to where, you know, streaming sites like Netflix not only save shows that are canceled, they like, hey, you know, remember that show that got, you know, <coughs> Firefly? They got canceled <laughs> uh, years and years ago. <laughs> let's 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 bring that back yeah. or let's reboot it or let's, you know. Yeah, and I am I rebooting something is a dangerous game. Because well, most of the time it's a it's a failure. I hear good things about the One Day at a Time reboot that was on Netflix. I've heard that it's very very well. Done. It was it was very well received. It's now moved off of Netflix to somebody else bought. Somebody it. else got it, and the bit they made news because they're not using the theme song anymore because they need to cut time. I can't I remember. Don't know. I'm like. That's like the big part of that, at least the original one. The, yeah. The theme song was the big, yep. you know. But oh well, it's that's fine. But and it, uh, and but then you get like Fuller House, which again the spirit of it. You know what? Getting the original characters back for people that were that love that show. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's It's not for me. No. Like I'm sure Saved by the Bell to a certain group oh, of yeah, people yeah, yeah. is huge. Yep. I have less than zero <laughs> right. interest in seeing that. right it wasn't yeah i mean i suppose if we sit there and think about it there's probably you know come up with a good half dozen to a dozen tv shows like yeah that never really got to blossom the way we'd like or it got canceled there's potential there you can come up with someone like yeah reboot that that would be interesting right i'm more i'm more in favor of remaking films or rebooting tv shows that they had a great concept. It just was either ahead of its time, behind its time. Mm -hmm. Something happened. It didn't live up to its potential. And with hindsight, they can do it right now. Remaking masterpieces, like, you know, I'm going to remake Psycho. Ugh. You know, that didn't go over too well. No. Especially when it's a shot by shot, shot remake. Shot shot. I mean, that's one of those things like, sure, I'm interested. It'd be but but I'm not going to go to the theater. I will wait for that. Yeah. I did see it. Whatever. Yeah. It's not. It, it, it's, Settle it's, down, Gus. <laughs> exactly. It's such a curiosity. You're like. Yeah. That's the only reason why, to see it. 
why would you do this? Yeah, remaking a, 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 a classic yeah. is a bad idea to yeah, begin with, yeah. and then Let do me... it exactly the yeah. same. Exactly. You know, 20 years, someone says, let's remake Breaking Bad. Like, no, they did it right the first time. Yeah. Let it be what it is. Yeah, the, there's rumblings again of Firefly being I know, I've up. read the same thing. I don't think it's going to happen, but I was talking to a friend of mine at work, and we, we figured it out. We figured out what the what the story should be because they want to you know, update it, and they want to do something else, and they want to do something. I was like, you, you have it set after the movie. Okay. You, uh, so we lose we lose a good number of well books. we have to lose book shepherd book anyway right yeah you lose uh you lose wash unfortunately that's the trade off yeah but, um, but Adam's doing uh, Alan Alan's he's doing fine he's doing fine he's doing fine he'll be on the the uh, Cassie and Andor series probably um, on Disney Plus nice uh, and he's doing a shit ton of voiceover work too. Um, but we figured it out. You have it set and you make it an action series and it's the Reaver Wars. It's the war between the ah. Reavers and the Alliance. Um, and you know, you can, you can have the, the Serenity crew pop in and out or whatever, but you just use that universe and there you go. Ah, there you go. I, that one I could, you know, that I could Some, get behind. Something where Nathan can, you know, film for a couple of months on his hiatus from, uh, the whatever. rookie yeah. or whatever show he's just pop in now and again and, you know, film a bunch of that and be, Yeah. It's possible. Right. Who knows? I, I don't think they will ever do it. I, I and yeah. I kind of don't almost. I almost don't want them to try. I kind of almost don't want them to to fuck. See, fuck that's with the it. thing. When someone, you know, if someone announced, you know, they're going to do a, they were going to do a series of Saint Almost Fire. Right. <laughs> they were. They were going to update and everything. And part of me goes, oh wow, I'd really be interested in seeing that. And the other part of you goes. No, let just leave yeah. it alone. Yeah. But not on the basis of you'll ruin my childhood. You know, fuck, no, fuck no, no, that. No. Fuck that. You know, n- there's no remake or reboot that is going to destroy what came before it. Right. It has to be held up to that standard and and usually will be found lacking. Yeah, that's the that's the problem you know? is you don't want diminishing returns. Right. You don't want a- Very rarely do you have something like Watchmen where you know, obviously, it it definitely blows, you know, the Snyder film out of the fucking water. Yeah, but it is, it is a worthy companion to the graphic novel. Yeah, you know, having not read the graphic novel, I cannot say for sure, but that is the word on the street. Uh, no, I will tell you that. Where yeah, people absolutely. That, where people are like, not it bad. fleshed out a lot of stuff that not even fleshed out. It used the source material properly. Yeah, it like. They showed consequences of what he did, you know, right. with, you know, with the, the when the psychic blast took out almost everybody. Hey, the whole him, uh, the whole uh, three, mirror guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mirror guy. That was amazing. Um, you know, that that whole that whole uh, sequence was amazing. But yeah. to finally, you know, and like I said, when I was watching it, I was laughing my ass off because, you know, Snyder took the whole giant squid thing out. Because they're like, well, it's not going to translate. It won't re- work really well. And they're like, fuck you. We're going to do it on TV. <laughs> and yep. they sure as fuck did. Exactly. They, and, they basically like shit canned like, hey, remember what you did before? No, we're not. This is not a sequel to your movie. Yeah. This is a this sequel is, to the graphic novel. Exactly. To and you can let your mo- your movie be, you know. And the movie is a, not bad. The movie is okay. I it, it's yeah. you know I, I enjoy it. Yes. I enjoy, I enjoy it. And they, but it's, they translated it fairly well. Hey. Who among us have not had hot, steamy sex to Leonard Cohen's <laughs> Hallelujah? Ugh. I mean, with every in a thrust. spaceship, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so that's uh, Punky Brewster's coming back. You know what else is coming back? What season three of season three of three uh, Westworld? Oh, so I have not seen one episode of Westworld. What? That. Yeah, just, uh, yep, it's one of those things. Just couldn't get to it's it. It's very, very good, but okay, this is not a do other things and just kind of half no. watch. No, this is eyes glued. This is Westworld. This is um, a Watchmen level of concentration. Yeah, Game needed. of Thrones. Yeah, exactly. It's like oh, boobies. I can look. You know, no, no, no. 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 Um, There's very rare. Although in Westworld, you get. Plenty of boobies because you know they're they're robots. Yeah. So all the robot boobies you want, <laughs> but they're really human beings. What? Yeah. Uh, the robots aren't real, Dan. What? So um so that's something that uh, 
our uh, three and a half listeners might be interested in knowing about that uh, Westworld returns on March 15th. Um, little little uh, uh, self-indulgent plug as well. Um, season two of The Aquarium is premiering on what? February 8th on a show about a place I work at. Wow. Um, it evidently did well enough. Um, and I, I have a feeling we're going to, they're just going to keep filming and keep doing it. Cause the, the zoo, the show that it's based off of in the Bronx, they, they just keep making it. Well, and, the synergy is, you know, yeah. And we're building a giant fucking shark exhibit. So, you know, we've uh-huh. got the, they've got the, the beginnings breaking ground of that. Right. And so when that is up and running, that's when I will say, Dan, now is the time, please. Oh, I'll go to the sure. I'll, I mean, I would go now, but now that I know that oh. there's a shark thing coming, I'm like, oh, I'll wait. Yeah, and do shark stuff. I wait till wait till November. Uh, that's when it'll it'll open. Um, and the place is a fucking wreck right now. Anyway, there there there's a lot of construction going on in the aquarium right now. Okay. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be ten years of job security for me. But the oh, well. um, but it's it's kind of a mess right now. <laughs> All, right. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Um, last thing I want to talk about today, unless you've got something uh, that was uh, popping in your head that needed to be. Uh... Uh, maybe, maybe. All right. Well, go ahead and hit me with it. I, I have to think about it. No, carry on All with right. your. All right, fair enough. Um, Rock World Hall of Fame. Yeah interesting um i didn't hear the full list i have the full um, list okay please go please on. let me tell you a little bit of a few people that were up that did not get in interest uh dave matthews band thank god yeah i mean come on yeah there's so many that you know i mean really yeah <laughs> i mean don't get me wrong he's got a couple catchy songs in the 90s. Yeah, I saw them live when I was in uh, London. Oh, really? Yes. Do they do a good live show? I mean... Yeah, they okay. did. They did. It was one of those things like, yeah, their, their violin player was not good. But uh, they... Um, yeah, they were, they they put on a pretty good show. All right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, to yeah. the point that I bought the that current album okay. at the time. And there hey, was a couple I, tunes on it that was pretty good. But I've, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Nah. I've got a couple albums, too. You know, but, you know, somewhere in my collection, I probably have a couple Milli Vanilli albums as well. <laughs> you know, that I got for free Yeah, when I worked in the industry. But, uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't mean they need to be in the Hall of Fame. On the other hand, uh, Pat fucking Benatar... Um, Hello, yeah, rock and roll freaking Hall of Fame. I don't know if this is her first opportunity to get in. Mm, Twenty five years after first album is, what uh, it is. What so is, I would think she's what does due. That put uh, that would put it seventy. F- no, 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 God. way later than that. So yeah, I can do math. Yeah, uh, twenty five. No, God, that makes it ninety five. Yeah, so she's well no, over ninety five. Yeah, oh, my God, <laughs> yeah, God, time is stretching. <laughs> like it's weird. Twenty years ago. You know, it was 2000, which is bizarre because 20 years ago was also 1980. Yes, exactly. You know, yeah. I believe that. I feel that. Yeah. So, yeah, she is. Oh, she's yeah. So she's been well eligible. Overdue. Now there's eligibility and then there's in the nominating process. Right. So, yeah, the, the eligibility. Yeah. The eligibility is 25 years after your first right. album. Um, also uh, up for consideration and not let in Judas Priest. OK, that's that's no, no. Come on. Yeah, they no, they they d- deserve to be there for sure. I mean, yes, you could say that Black Sabbath was the original heavy metal band, but Judas Priest was the original metal band. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Let's face it. I mean, you know, Led Zeppelin, not really heavy metal. No, hard rock blues. Yes, you know, a couple songs may verge into slight metal right. territory, but not really. Not metal as we define it. Yeah, you know, um, Black Sabbath. You know, hard, heavy doom rock yeah. that appeals to people who are into heavy metal, but it's not. When I think my... heavy metal, it's it's Judas Priest, Priest and Iron Maiden. And Scorpions. And Scorpions, yeah. And Iron Maiden's not in. I don't think Scorpions are in. I'm no, pretty sure they're not. So. Judas Priest is not in. Okay. Uh, even though they, you know, their first album came out in 1970. 70 something, yeah. Yeah, like Rockarola. 76 or something. Oh, God, no, way before that. Wait, really? I would say, ni- yeah, the band formed in like the late 60s. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. So there's, you know, I mean, they were already doing, you know, Priest in the East and, uh, you know, Exciter and stuff like that in the mid 70s, uh, mid to late 70s. But, so. well, that's always been the, that's been the, the big complaint about the, the, the Hall of Fame is, 
every year it's always you know the people who don't get in is almost more so than yeah well you look do. at the you look at the list of the current people being inducted i would agree with uh one two three eh, all but maybe one or two of them i i can see okay but, but i would easily sub out a number of them for some of the people that didn't get in the one that i am so pissed about is craft work did yeah. not get in <laughs> And I voted in the fan voting, so I see, you know, yeah. what the popularity of on the Dave Matthews band got the most votes for the fan vote. Yeah. And Kraftwerk was down in the like the bottom five with the MC five and um yeah, that's Rufus gonna, and Shaka Khan. That's gonna be a tough sell, I think. <laughs> for Kraftwerk? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nine Inch Nails got in. Would they fucking exist without Kraftwerk? No, but... Depeche they're... Mode got in. Yeah. Would they exist without Kraftwerk? Yes, but they're well, much more well-known than Kraftwerk. <laughs> I hate to break that. Not among you. people that should fucking know. Right. But well, I mean, that's not who we're talking I about. I mean, as much as, as, much as I, I enjoy my Depeche Mode and Nine Inch Nails, just Kraftwerk, man. No, I agree. I agree. But Kraftwerk. <laughs> Who else? Boing, right. boom, chop. All right. <laughs> Continuing the uh, the list of people that got in, obviously mentioned uh, Nine Inch Nails to Pesh Mode, the Doobie Brothers. Um, yeah, you know they they've got a lot of great songs. Yeah. I don't know, but if they're it's a band. They're an, of... they're now they're a band who you just need to buy a Best of the Doobie Brothers album exactly. and, and you're set. Yeah, that's that's that, pretty much you've it. You've got all the good stuff. You know, they've much. got the they've got basically three eras. They've got the before Michael McDonald, yes, Michael McDonald, yep. and after Michael McDonald, right. and all the really good stuff is before Michael McDonald and, you know. and during Michael McDonald and, and I mean, during a little bit. You know. But they went from a good rock and roll party band to kind of a top forty, yeah, easy listening slash pop band, right? Which is fine. I mean, I've got those songs. Yeah, they're great songs. And they were like session guys anyway. There a lot of them were like Skunk Baxter, and, yeah. and they were you know, they just put a band together kind of. Yeah. It, 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 Okay, I mean between that and and um, Dave Matthews, oh, Doobie's all the way. Yes, for sure. If but you, if you know. have kind of that you know laid back kind of jammy, couple of good songs. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Whitney Houston got in. Um, see, she only really had about two good records, and then after that, it just kind of got not. Good. Yeah, <laughs> their definition of rock and roll is also well, a bit and and that's specious, and, and that's know? and that's fine for me. I don't think of it as the rock and roll hall of fame. It's a music hall of fame. Yeah, the term rock and roll is more in my. It's more kind of maybe an attitude. Yeah, you know, like let's I, face it, Kraftwerk is definitely not rock and right. roll. You know, like Run yeah. DMC is in there, and I think that's completely valid you know right. stuff like that i don't have a problem with i mean hell with just the raising hell album alone they should have gotten in. oh yeah you know and because they were the progenitors of you know basically of rap in in well rap period not rap in america rap started in america yeah so which we will hopefully be talking about uh some point future in a show i like to call uh three white guys talk about rap <laughs> gonna bring in a guest and uh we're gonna talk about uh we're gonna talk about rap it's gonna be two white guys and Damn. dan watching you two talk because uh, i know nothing of it other than the fact that i happened to be there while it was going on <laughs> rap was happening that's right you were you i was were, there you I were mean, in I was, new york i was, when was in was new york in the 70s God, as a it's almost kid. like oh i grew up in london in the 70s yeah what bands did you go see? Oh, I didn't see any bands. Yeah, I was exactly I was it's. just there. <laughs> what the punk scene was going on, and you yep. were you didn't know? No. no, I was on the other side of London. I was in the library. <laughs> I was in the library studying. Um. So yeah. Um. Uh. Obviously, Nine Inch Nails. Um. Yeah. I mean, for for industrial yeah. kind of industrial. I mean pop industrial yeah i mean pretty hate machine and um and you know the first three records are pretty much i mean downward spiral you know the other shit we have marilyn manson because yep. we have uh yep. we have uh, nine inch nails yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm okay with i'm that. okay with that and i'm and i'm really hoping that gary newman in, in you know inducts nine inch nails uh either gary newman or peter murphy from bauhaus yeah that makes sense yeah i say of bauhaus because they're back, you know. Really? 
Peter Murphy was doing his solo residence in New York. I think it was New York. Pretty sure it was New York. And he had a heart attack, like a full-on heart attack. He pushed through it and didn't call the doctor till the next day. I mean, that's dangerous because lack of oxygen to heart muscle kills your heart. Yeah. And whatever happened. (laughs) Subsequently. Subsequently. But he made it through okay, put a couple stents in there, unblocked Mm -hmm. an artery, whatever. And strangely enough, within, I want to say, like a couple of weeks of him being out, I have a feeling that the other guys in Bauhaus, which he had been estranged from for like 13 years because they did not leave on good terms after the last record that, you know, they did a reunion record they were going to tour for, but apparently... You know, Peter was his usual dickhead self. You know, he's a difficult man. Yeah. Um, and they said, fuck it, we're over. I'm not tour. We're not touring and goodbye. I have a feeling the other guys reached out, even Kevin Haskins, which, uh, you know, he's not a big Peter Murphy fan. They said, you know what? We're getting older. And it's a wake up call. Kind it's of a wake up call. Like, oh, fuck. I always figured we'd play again at some point, but God. That could have never happened. Let's go ahead and do this now. And they've been doing a series of one-off shows here and there. They're not touring. They just, you know, they go, we're going here and here, here, and then go away. Yeah. And then they're do- doing a few festivals, and then, they're, you know, they're not announcing anything big. They're just taking it easy. And you know what? Fine. Yeah. So I figure that's what happened with the Bauhaus reunion, and that's a good and, – and Nine Snails toured with Peter Murphy – Okay. So their version of Warm Leatherette that him and um, Trent Reznor did mm-hmm. for the, um, um, there's a video of it on YouTube. Oh my God. It's better than the original. I'm not saying something. That's, okay. That's like the original electronic, gothic, industrially type thing. Hmm. Those terms that I just used. <laughs> um, also included the stalwart of, of classic rock radio, the Notorious B.I.G., Okay, yeah. In the rap game, yes. Yes. Yeah. He's, yeah. you know, I don't know if Tupac Shakur is in there. I would assume, but I <sighs> it, don't it, want to assume. It's so it's so prickly yeah. when it comes to the to the rap stuff for for some people for some reason. Like I said, I don't consider it quote rock and roll. It's just music hall of fame. We're yeah. honoring musicians and bands that did great shit. And you can't deny that only two records yeah. before he died. And, and I, if I'm not mistaken, he died. He had finished record two, but died before it came out, uh, which you, ca- you can't get better promotion. Exactly. I mean, seriously, <laughs> major. Well, you know. and again, it goes almost back to the Firefly thing, whereas the mystique of it only being 14 episodes is kind of what propels it to right. the legendary status. Right. And I, Same I would, with him. I would put it to you that if it had been reversed, that if in 1970 the Rolling Stones had broken up and never got back together and the Beatles continued on, yeah, the mystique of the Beatles would be nowhere near what it is now. Yeah. Because... It's all circumstance. They ended in their prime, yeah. left people wanting more as the, you know... And the Stones are... St- Still touring. They're still touring. <laughs> Charlie Watts must be made of 90% dust by now. I mean, God bless him. Early for... hundreds, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I looked at the, I think when uh, Mick Jagger had his uh, heart attack recently. Yeah. Uh, I looked it up and I can't remember. I want to say he's like in his early to mid 70s. Mick? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, Brr. well, it's weird because I thought, God, Stevie Wonder must be. And he's only six, he's 69 years old now. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I would have thought he would have been much older than that. But you figure he was little Stevie Wonder as a teenager when he right. first came up. Right, so, right, right. And Mick, you know, they were, they were probably, I want to say, late teens when oh, they at least, got on the yeah. scene. So so anyway, yeah, Notorious B.I.G. Yeah, in the, okay. rap, in the rap game, looms large. Yep. You know, I would have put in a half dozen people before, you know, as far as got to honor the, the old school of rap, you know. Yeah. I would have put in, you know, Spoonie G. I would have put in uh, Grandmaster Kaz. Um, you know, a number of the, the old school, you know, Cool Herc should have been in there. Okay. But uh, all these names that he, you've... I've heard names. You've heard names. I've heard names. Okay. Um, but yeah, fine. And then the last inductee is uh, T-Rex, Mark Boland's oh, band. Oh, okay. And yeah, 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. I can see that. Does not has not held up on rock radio. You don't hear any T Rex on on classic rock radio. Maybe Bang a Gong. Yeah, that's Maybe. the only one that you hear. But there's there's so many other. I great think my buddy's band. dad worked with them. Uh, Tony oh, really? Tony Visconti. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, he was a yeah. producer for T Rex. Yeah. Nope. Way to name drop there, Dan. Kablam! Have you uh, have I played uh, have I played you the um, the uh, the animation? Yes. Of, of, yeah. of, yes. Of Tony Visconti. Tony Visconti doing things. Co-producer on this record. I can do things too. Yes. I'm like okay, very good. But the uh, but the one artist that it's not John Parr who sang the theme to Sandals Fire. Yes. <laughs> Man in Motion. I even know the name of it. That's right. <laughs> He's not the person that I think should be in the Hall of Fame. Okay. Okay. I mean, maybe later, just because of that song. And Naughty Naughty. I mean, come on. <laughs> He's a two-hit wonder. That's not one-hit uh, wonder. That's a two-hit that's, wonder. That's double of that's, that. That's, that's 100% more hits than a one-hit wonder. <laughs> right. um, the artist that I, I definitely feel that really needs to be in the Hall of Fame is... Medication time. Medication time. Ah, we ran out of time. I will tell you next week. The Nine Billion Names of Pod was conceived, written, and performed by Michael Reed and Dan Bauman, with Abdul Benny Hassan as the sound of splintering wood. Research, transportation, and exasperated looks by Courtney Loner. Technical assistance by Cubase, Pro Tools, Skynet, QLab, Deep Thought, Big Brother, and Eddie, your shipboard computer. Financial consideration provided by the Wayne Foundation, Stark Industries, the Piranha Brothers, and LexCorp. Legal counsel by the offices of Howard, Howard, and Fine. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. Our intro music is written by Tim Inc. This podcast is sponsored by Deep Shack Records and is a production of Audio Primate. There's a couple stars on iTunes, why don't you? Listen, watch on YouTube, stream us on Spotify, listen on SoundCloud, stream us on Stitcher, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or email us, comlinkabillionpod.com. And until this happens again, I'm Dan Bowman. I'm Michael Reed. L O Z. Audio Primate.